high to 10 degrees. So I do both, I do three and 10. I use 10 degrees for a whole different reason. Because I have joint ailments, I use 10 degrees for inflammatory purposes. So the three degrees, they say in a week, it should be not more than 10 minutes. Or 10 minutes is sufficient. So that could be two five minute sessions, or it could be two days, and in that day you do two two minute dips, um, kind of quick in and out. I do about 20 minutes, two 10 minute, or two five to 10 minute uh, dips at a 10 degree because of inflammation. So my joints, my muscle soreness, because I've got other injuries to offset the impact of those, I'm doing it just for that purpose. One thing to be mindful of is ideally don't cold plunge right after a workout. The reason is, I know most gyms sell it as that benefit or hey, workout, cold plunge, great. If you work out, what's the purpose? Muscle growth? How does muscle grow? You tear the muscle? How does the body repair a torn muscle? It brings in repair mechanisms, which is inflammation. So the inflammation is the mechanism for your muscles to grow. You tear the muscle, you reduce the inflammation, you're actually kind of hindering optimal muscle growth. So if you want to do the cold plunge, you do it on its own day, or give a, a couple of hours between your workout, not right after. If you're doing it right after, I do it for time purposes some days, but I try to do it on a different day. Know that you're doing it for inflammation benefits or detox, and it may hinder a bit of that muscle growth. Again, this is, when, when, when I'm saying these things or what research says these things, this is if you're training every day, you've already got a lot of muscle. If you're just starting off your journey and you're doing both, no problem. But at some point you want to start differentiating it to start maximizing your results. Um, ice in the morning, sauna at night. Ice helps wake up. The sauna puts your body and regulates the temperature down and it puts you ready for bed. You get great sleep. The other thing I'd say for sleep and just rounding out the diet part and alcohol, if you ever have two glasses of wine after 10 p.m., what's your heart rate? My sleeping heart rate is about 48, 49. will be 56 to 63 if I drink after 8 p.m. Which means your body is not, you might sleep well because you pass out, but your body is not actually relaxed and repairing itself. Same thing with food. As bad as alcohol, most people know, if you eat a buffet at 10 p.m., it's pretty much the same impact as drinking alcohol in that your heart will be up because it's processing the food as opposed to repairing itself. So try and put, whether it's alcohol or food, unlike Brian Johnson, don't eat your last meal or drink at 12.30, but you know, aim for daylight. And if you get hungry and you're a late owl, find something that's light on the body. For me, it's like half a glass of milk will be filled enough at 10, 11 p.m to sleep without impacting the digestion and waking up the body to work and digest the food. So I bulk on my food pre seven and, I, and I'm pretty good. So just a hack there. Um, other things like breath work, they're just routines in terms of mindfulness, in terms of relieving the stress, in terms of setting up routine. But they all have a place, but you find what works for you. For me, my stress relief and meditation is the gym. Lifting weights means I'm singularly focused, I'm not thinking about eight things. Not that I don't want to, I'm not, not thinking about the email or the work or the deck uh, or the client page. It's just, I'm dying underneath a weight bar that I can't have the ability to think, which is my meditative like, form of stress for me. Uh, next slide. Uh, I think it's pretty much wrapping up here, which is, you can see different case studies of people from all backgrounds have refocused on their health. Sure, COVID might have been an accelerator, but the more that the research is coming out on the, the basics of exercise and sleep goes such a long way, even those with extremely busy schedules are focusing on health. And the other thing I'd like to point out here, is it doesn't matter what you do, whether you're a runner, lifter, what your cardio is, um, in that uh, Mark Zuckerberg on the bottom left image, he's into martial arts and that's his cardio and uh, kind of form of exercise. Jeff Bezos obviously had transformation. Uh, Brian Johnson is on the extreme end of biohacking. So whether it's biohacking or sports, it doesn't matter. It's still 
exercise, sleep, and routine diet, mm-hmm. and it goes a long way. It's important to fit that in no matter how busy you are or the scale of your business. It will help in the long term. Even if you look at it, I'm slightly late on this task, I'm taking a day or two longer, like I said, all of you will have your overnight success after 10 years of effort. So to get through that 10 years, make the choices now. Next slide. And I think that that's pretty much it. So we can skip the slide. Um, all the last slide in this says is, they find they. the last and final hack is do it with a friend. If your partner's involved, if your friends are involved, some of this becomes a fun catch up. So a lot of my friends have gotten them into exercise and even outside PT will do a group hit class or with my girlfriend. So just to give you an example, my girlfriend's with Bacardi, handles 10 alcohol brands. So that's like the polar opposite of me and health, wellness, longevity. So one hour fun balance is two weeks a night, we'll walk from River Valley to Marina Bay and back. So that's an hour and a half one way. Sometimes it'll only be one way because we're tired, but along the way, we'll stop at three or four of our bars that are her clients, and she'll have a shot at each. So she's had four shots. We've had a couple time together just to de-stress and catch up. But for her, who would have otherwise just gone to four bars, at least she's getting some exercise. And I'm enjoying an environment. So there's a bit of a balance, and that keeps us, it makes it more enjoyable than me going, crap, I have to go for an hour and a half walk uh, by myself. So having friends and kind of building this into your lifestyle, goes a really long way to not make it feel like a burden. And like I said, minimum effective dose, hour in a week is not hard to take out. Um, and it should be doable. So with T-Square, like I said, we've got personal training, meal prep, physio. And we have relations with doctors uh, as well for different bundles to do health and wellness together. Um, and then myself, obviously I've been in healthcare for 15 years. I just did an interview with Brian Johnson. Please a month ago when he was here for the Don't Die Summit two months ago so that's where some of the insights obviously were so yeah any any questions I'm happy to answer them caveat I'm not a doctor I'm relaying some of the information they're telling me so uh, don't shoot the messenger any questions? Well, maybe I do have a question but what made you start this business and what keeps you the right? Yeah, so, um, so I was in the medical space, or am still, uh, working with hospital mainly for 15 years. Last two or three years, I moved into the gym, this longevity space. It actually started with something a lot more simpler, which was I wanted to bring Bali to Singapore. So I set up kind of a gym, ice bath, sauna. Then through my personal injury of needed a knee, re- well, three orthopedic surgeons said knee replacement five years ago. I haven't got one, and most people that don't know me don't see any impact. And that was all just getting myself, losing weight, building muscle, letting my body compensate for a joint weakness. And so I've just kind of seen the benefit of that. And I want to go from treatment to preventative uh, and optimizing how I live. So that's where I moved into the fitness wellness space. So the next thing from here is um, longevity clinics, more on the lifestyle interventions, health coaching, uh, stem cells, those elements. Uh, but definitely that's where working with T-Squared and for a personal training gym, it was very unique to see them have this holistic view. So I went from medical to T-Squared to kind of push this initiative having wanting to do it myself. How do you celebrate in hospital to the island? Yeah, so, um, as opposed to hospitals, we do clinics, but we do doctors. So we have two collaborations. KTA Medical is more of a, a GP with blood test. So you go in, you do a blood test, you exercise. Uh, three or six months later, you do a blood test. They have two options for basic and performance. Essentially, the basic is your cholesterol markers, your, your health. Your second level blood test is your hormones, your testosterone, your female hormones, how they are, and see how they change with exercise. So it's kind of data-driven results. Our Oslo partnership takes it a notch higher that they really are in the lifestyle medical space. They'll do the same test, but instead of just giving you the results, they will kind of be there as a coach and guide you on what you need, but they'll also tell 
our personal trainers that look based on your test, this is the type of programming to focus more on, whether it's cholesterol reduction, increasing muscle mass, they'll kind of guide based on the results and interpret that. And if you need, they'll kind of guide you on your other uh, diet, programming, day-to-day -day intervention. So we look at OSCAR as longevity, we look at PT medical as data-driven. So two two tiers. Any questions from anybody? Otherwise, like, you know, we are also happy to like uh, yeah. push Barbara things well at the same show. So thank you everybody. And you want so hard. Yeah. Congratulations for today. Okay. Thank you. All of you. <laughs>